When a cow moves, she's going, I declare the glory of God. When a dog barks, arr, 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 I, I, I declare, arr, I declare the glory, arr, the glory of God. When a bird flies, she's declaring the glory. When a fish swims, they're declaring the glory. When a wolf howls, whoo, the glory of God. Ah, oh, he's an awesome God. Oh, ain't he bad? Nobody like him. Hallelujah. He's God all by himself. Oh, bless his wonderful name. All of heaven is bowing before him right now. The angels are bowing before him. The elders are bowing before him. The saints of old are bowing. He's God all by himself. Shake hands with two people and tell them he's God all by himself. Yeah, he's the God that sits on the circle of the earth and declares, I'm God all by myself. He's the God that will return someday soon with 10,000s of his saints. He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. God says, I know you're worried about your situation. I, I know you're worried about your family, but everything is subject to my name. This world is my footstool, and I'm sitting on top of your problems right now. If you ever catch a glimpse of who our God is, then you'll believe that nothing, nothing is impossible for him. If you ever understand how awesome he is, then you'll start using your faith in him in a whole new way. Tell somebody he's God all by himself. Oh, you need to quit talking about your problems and start talking about Jesus. Quit talking about all the things that you're going through and start talking about the King of glory. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Let me tell you, if you want your finances to grow, start targeting your faith. Start talking about Jesus. Start obeying the word. If you want to see your church grow, start lifting up Jesus higher and higher. If you want to see your Bible study grow, lift him up. Don't talk about your pastor. Talk about Jesus. Don't talk about your problems. Talk about Jesus. Don't talk about the economy. Talk about Jesus. I came here to tell you to get your eyes on Jesus. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. How big is God? The heavens tremble at his presence. The angels lay prostrate before him. He's the God of all power and all glory and all dominion forever. All things were made by him and for him. He's before all things. In him all things hold together. In fact, he is so much God that without him the world would fly apart at the seams. If you'll open your eyes, you'll see that Jesus is the tree that was thrown into the bitter waters of Mara. I don't know quite what to tell you, but the bitter waters, the the children of Israel had been in the desert. They'd been in the wilderness for years. And they, literally hundreds of thousands of them together, and they came upon a spring of water. I mean, you know, it takes a lot of water to feed, to, 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 to feed the thirst of, of a couple of million people. And they just couldn't go get a bottle of water at the corner station. And they, were, they came upon this spring at the, at the waters of Mara. And they, they happened upon the spring, and the spring waters were bitter. The spring waters were poisoned, and they needed water desperately. And so God told them to take a tree, and to take the, the tree and to, to throw it in the rivers of uh, the, the waters of Mara. And as they threw that tree in the water, it says that the bitter waters became sweet. The poison came out of the water. It is a picture for you and I today that no matter what bitterness may be in our life, if we'll begin to look to the Lord, 
if we'll begin to look on him. See, it's a picture, it's a type and shadow so that we knew what does a tree have to do with God. Jesus made the tree and then hung on the tree and became the curse so we could be blessed. When they threw the tree into the bitter waters, it was a picture of the cross of Jesus Christ. It was a picture to let us know that when Jesus comes and we get him into the bitterness of our lives, now everything can begin to turn around. He turned my bitter waters sweet. When I gave my life to the Lord, I was full of bitterness. But when I gave my life to him, he turned the bitter waters sweet. Does anybody know what I'm preaching about in here? He, who is this God? He's the one that heals all my diseases because he is the Lord my healer. He's the, the, the water in the rock that quenches my thirsty soul. He's my oasis in the desert. He's my river in the desert. Now remember, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, you cannot please God. And so all I'm trying to do right now today is build up your faith. I'm trying to encourage you in your faith so you begin to target your faith for your family. Target your faith for your finances. Target your faith for a, an advancement on your job. Begin to target your faith in the Lord. If you look to Jesus, you'll see him in the veil in the temple. The Bible says that when he hung on the cross, that the veil in the temple was torn from the top to the bottom. It was about 20 foot tall, about 40 foot wide, about six inches thick of material. And the Bible says that when Jesus hung on the cross, that, that veil in the temple that was the door into the Holy of Holies, that that veil was torn from the top to the bottom. In other words, if it was torn from the bottom to the top, somebody might have said, well, a bunch of soldiers got a hold of the, of the material and they began to pull on it until they tore it. But when it's torn from the top to the bottom, it was God saying, I tore the veil. I moved out of the holy of holies and into the hearts of men and women. God no longer lives in the holy of holies. He no longer lives in a building. He now lives in the tabernacle, the temple, which is you and I, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 